Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. And without faith it is impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to Him must believe that He exists and that He rewards those who earnestly seek Him. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. Everything is possible for one who believes. Welcome to Faith Matters. In your face. Oh, this sounds like a good devotional to go over today. In the face of persecution. Mm. That's persecution. That's when somebody's putting you down for what you're doing, right? I think so. Yeah. Hmm. Well, there's a lot of that lately around here. Today, we're going to look at this devotional from Uncommon called Soil on New Version. What do we have here? The disciples came to him and asked, Why do you speak to the people in parables? He replied, Because the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven have been given to you, but not to them. Matthew 13, 10 and 11. Before we reach the climax and the good soil, let's reflect once more on the full story of the parable of the sower. Thus far, we've seen three different types of soil. Soil along a path, soil among the rocks, and soil among the thorns. All three lead to hardness of hearts and fruitlessness. More importantly, they lead to eternal damnation. Mm. None of them exhibit faith, ultimately. As every believer does, we should be looking to find assurance that we don't fall into any of these three kinds of soil for people who are participating in ongoing sanctification. The first kind of soil can be easy to spot. If you aren't resistant to the gospel, you aren't along the path soil. The second two kinds of soils are far more dangerous and can be sneaky. Fruit of the second and third soil often becomes apparent when persecution hits. We see this from Matthew thirteen twenty one. Yet he has no firm root in himself, but is only temporary. And when affliction or persecution arises because of the word, immediately he falls away. Mm. In previous days, we discussed being planted in the word and avoiding worldly pleasures. In previous days, we discussed being planted in the word and avoiding worldly pleasures. But what about persecution? Did you know Jesus promises persecution for his believers? John 15 says, If you were of the world, the world would love you as its own. Hmm. But because you're not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the word that I said to you. A servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they keep my word, they will also keep yours. John fifteen nineteen and 20. They persecuted Jesus. They will persecute us. We should expect it. In fact, Matthew says it's a blessing. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Matthew 5, 10. The fruitless soils from the parable we are studying crack under the pressure of persecution. Fruitful believers expect persecution and are blessed by it. Consider Acts 5.41 that comes immediately after being imprisoned and flogged for Jesus' namesake. The apostles left the Sanhedrin rejoicing because they had been counted worthy of suffering disgrace for the name. Acts 5.41 So here are some uncommon questions. Do you rejoice at suffering? Hmm. How should we handle persecution? Hmm. I know we should trust God through persecution, that's for sure. Yes. That's our challenge, in fact, is to trust Him. When persecution comes, rejoice in it if it's for His name's sake. Right. We will be persecuted for His name. And you know, darling, this morning I got an email mm -hmm. from a follower of the Facebook page that we put the news on. Mm -hmm. And this very wise follower said, you know, I have an idea of why you might be facing some persecution on your page. It could be because you share your beliefs. Mm. And so I wrote back, amen, we're charging forward. Mm -hmm. We've got to do that. We've got to stand up and take the persecution. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. 
Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Then the God of peace will be with you. Because if we are being persecuted, we're doing the right things. Because he promised that we would have persecution. Right. So let us rejoice in it now. Wow, what a week. Let's, let's rejoice in it once again. Lord, thank you for the suffering. Thank you for the persecution. Thank you for the angry, bitter people. Thank you for all of the mean things that people say. Let these things build our character and to increase our endurance. Help us to be a good soil, a soil that does not fall void when persecuted. Mm -hmm. Help us to be fruitful. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.